you know, you got to remember it. Holiday short and week, but we still had an interesting week. And you wonder if it's the beginning of some volatile times. Let's move to the next slide. We've had that 10% bounce basically from the lows in August. And uh, we have pulled back some this week, right down 3% on what I feel is kind of overblown recession fears. But nevertheless, that's kind of what we pulled back on. The biggest thing we were waiting on this week was a non-farm payroll this morning. It comes in 142, lower than consensus. But eventually, it's it's sort of showing that we're slowing down a little bit as an economy. ADP showed the same thing. Jolt showed the same thing. There's plenty of other economic data that suggests as such. And look, we've had interest rates at a, at a decent rate for a while. So of course, we're going to see some of these pull back a little bit. Gold and silver were a little bit higher uh, this week. Dollar was weak. And uh, Bitcoin kind of struggled for direction. It's up a little bit this morning, but Bitcoin hasn't really done a whole lot this week. Ten-year yields continue to fall, man. Three point six seven five seven percent of of this week, the low that we've seen since June of last year. And Fed funds rates. This is probably changed in the last twenty minutes or so, but they've been they're pricing at least at the end of the year, which possibly implies. 50 basis point rate cut. After this morning, the uh, chances of a 50 basis point rate cut just went up. It was at around 40%. Now it's around above 50. Uh, so who knows what we're going to get as far as rate cuts go. Yeah, 50-50 shot right now. Place your bets. Yeah, as long as they, you place the bets that work for you. Volatility is a little bit higher, as we all know. The, I didn't realize that VIX was up to 23 this morning, by the way, uh, with this number coming in. It's back below 20 now. But nevertheless, it's hanging around the 19-20 level. And VVIX is at the highest level we've seen since the the regional banking crisis last year as well. So some things harkening back to, to last year volatile times. Yeah, you could tell by some of the positions you have on that have premium components to them, which is basically all the positions that I have on. It didn't seem like volatility was coming in very much, even though forward slash VX was trending a little bit lower. Again, it's still near its highs, like you said, got over, well, you said VIX got over 23. Forward slash VX got up around 20. It's now back to 18 and change. I think today going into the weekend, if we sit here, volatility gets annihilated in the positions you have. I agree you think with you so there. Little, I, I think uh, it's going to be a bloodbath today. I think it's, I think premium is going to be a bloodbath. A bloodbath on volatility, a bloodbath on the market. No, volatility. Jamal, you got a different opinion. Let's hear it. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're going to hang in there until, honestly, I, I, I was I was really hoping that however the number came in, it led to a relief rally uh, and, and that would create vol coming in. Again, we got a long day ahead, but I don't know. I'm starting to think that uh, since we didn't do it initially, I think we're just going to, I think volatility is going to hang out here for the next, well, it's less, it's almost 10 days now, right? Until we got the Fed meeting, which is on the 18th. I, I just think it's going to hang in there now to see whether we get a 25 or 50. I think that's it. Okie dokie. That's fair. Another thing that changed a little bit this week, we got a little bit of disinversion in the 10-2 curve. And, uh, you know, this is the first time since July 2022. Everybody seems to believe that uh, that's actually when the trouble really starts, when you get disinversion in the curve. I uh, I don't know. I don't remember. What do you guys think? Is it is it a big deal or no? When you say, you mean a big deal? You mean the down. yield curve? You're talking about the yield curve going to back to its normal normalizing, state. Normalizing, normalizing. Yeah. Why would that? Why would that be a negative? I mean, usually you get a little bit of of inflation, which is typically good for stocks, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't know, but we're at highs. You always want the yield curve to be uninverted. Normal. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, that's why they call it normal. Yeah, so, I don't want to. I don't want an inverted. Something yield. seems to happen when it moves across the line, right? Something seems to happen when it moves across the line in one way or the other. So uh, interest rates typically go lower or, or across the curve. That's usually what happens. Usually good for housing. I don't know. I mean, that's usually. I mean, this market seems to be a little different than everything else. Doesn't mean it has to happen. But yeah, mm -hmm. one uh, something that hadn't happened in almost two years has happened, or I'm sorry, has hasn't happened in over two years. Starting to happen once again. Let's move to the next slide. Oil's been really, really volatile. The last uh, month or so, yeah. Ooh, some some as high as four percent in either direction. Uh, we're at the lows of the year now. I decided to get longer. What are you guys doing in here? You know what? You, 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 you are correct. And the world's worst commodity trader, that's myself, uh, couldn't stay away from this volatility in oil. Um, and even I had to put on a put ratio spread. And I'm the world's worst commodity trader. So I'm in your camp. Tom's a little bit more neutral. Uh, he's been bearish on oil going into this move, which has worked out very, very nicely for him. But I think, I think he stayed in a little too long. I'm actually flat right now. I'm just short some strangles. I don't know. I, I think, think it's, it's the right play. I think it's the right play. It's working today. It's come in, the right play. coming over a buck today. It's crazy. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that, that's a good play, too. I mean, it, it has mostly been in a range between 70 and 82, right? So that's as long as you're in between there, you're probably pretty good. So it's also, you know, all this talk of what's going on in the economy and recessionary stuff, uh, Dollar Tree and Dollar General both got rocked on earnings a week apart. 
you know, their customers are usually sort of middle of the road, right? And they both talked about how they feel stuff's going on with their customer and they're financially constrained. So that's kind of an issue. I usually don't pay much attention to earnings, but I thought that that was uh, somewhat interesting. Bank of Canada cut rates by a quarter percentage point for the third consecutive meeting. So another central bank is cutting rates ahead of the U.S. As you can see, one of our closest partners and that we uh, who exports, uh, we export a lot of stuff to. Biden administration is warning this steal, this snip and steal deal. Uh, it's going to be who knows if this thing is going to go through. They're warning that this is a deal of, of, of national security. And it. I feel like it's going to open up the window for a domestic company to probably buy them for on on the cheap uh, because I don't think the U.S. is going to allow this one to go through. We'll see what happens. So we got inflation reports, if they still matter anymore, CPI and PPI coming up next week, Wednesday and Thursday. And then uh, the market measure this week was pretty good. Why would you ever sell calls? Take a look at that. It's a good one. It's a good one for sure. 